okay good afternoon everyone uh, welcome one and all to this uh, webinar held under the recently launched research initiative called the geophysical flows lab at iit madras it's my pleasure to invite uh, professor b n goswami for today's webinar uh, to give you a brief introduction of the speaker professor b n goswami is a meteorologist climatologist and a former director of the indian institute of tropical meteorology in pune he has made several original contributions to our understanding of the monsoon dynamics by providing the first quantitative measure at predictability of the tropical climate involving the coupled ocean atmosphere system he is an elected fellow of all three major indian science academies the indian national science academy the indian academy of sciences and the national academy of sciences india professor goswami received the shanti swarup bhatnagar prize for science and technology for his contributions to earth atmosphere ocean and planetary sciences in 1995 he is currently a scrb distinguished fellow at cotton university guwahati so today is going to be talking about how could the indian academic community help moes in improving the skill of weather and climate forecast in the country so as uh, professor goswami has indicated that he doesn't mind questions during the talk so that it remains interactive so you could either unmute and ask your question or if you put your questions in the chat box i am happy to read them and uh, communicate it to professor goswami professor goswami the floor is all yours thank you mani thank you very much uh, and uh, i'm pleased to be here uh, this talk has a little bit of history behind it uh, uh, background behind it uh, uh, during last couple of months i gave a, a few talks at uh, icts and then they asked me to actually a question towards the end that how uh, the uh, the academic community uh, uh, community could uh, help or contribute to the, the the need of the nation for improving the skill of weather and forecast uh, in the country um, following that money had sent uh, circulated a, a, a program of there this uh, very interesting um, geophysical fluid uh, um, flows <coughs> program Uh, it was a very interesting program. I, the, he also asked me um, how could they actually get contribute to the mainstream result that is required to, uh, for the uh, country's weather and climate services. Uh, so, uh, uh, so that is kind of a background. And this, uh, I decided that uh, at that point that uh, uh, um, uh, I could talk about it because I had a bit of an experience over this. Uh, uh, and during the last uh, couple of decades uh, when uh, you know, the moes are gone um, uh, about 2006 uh, and that is the time when i joined the atm there is a lot of research going uh, that has been done in the in the monsoon research over the last uh, century or so and this research has definitely improved our understanding uh, the basic basic research improved the understanding uh, of the variability and predictability of the indian monsoon considerably uh, but none of that research seem to have been able to uh, uh, be connected to the improvement of forecast in the uh, in the national weather service and uh, the imds forecasts are still far behind the rest of the world about 30 years behind the uh, rest of the uh, rest of the world at that point of time and uh, we needed something drastically to do improve these uh, fortunately mos has gone and the mos uh, has uh, leadership recognized this issue and uh, there was a brainstorming session and then a lot of discussions in between and, uh, and through that we uh, a, a major program called indian monsoon mission was launched in around 2008 9 Uh, the main, uh, <coughs> uh, but but it was recognized at that point of time that to bridge this gap of about thirty years of our capacity to do uh, do uh, state of the art weather forecast and uh, climate forecast uh, mm -hmm, uh, uh, could not be achieved in a few, in a short time like about five seven years or eight years. Uh, we, by the expertise that was available within the moes system uh, institutes uh, because there are 
three things were, were, were very important to happen at that point of time. One is that uh, the computing facility in the country was very poor and especially available to MOH organization uh, was uh, very poor. It had to go from that time the capacity was like uh, about one teraflop uh, and now it had to be uh, had to be uh, improved to about one teraflop uh, uh, sustained power. Uh, that uh, was non-trivial. Uh, then the capacity building of weather and climate model during the country. See, there was people who were, uh, were using uh, some weather and climate model to do research, but actually building models and uh, and to improve models because different types of a different type of uh, uh, capacity and that was missing in the country uh, completely missing there is a, is a big vacuum in that so the close and also so therefore it required that there is there must be a close collaboration or interaction between the moes organizations and the academic community uh, to achieve this uh, it was recognized during one mission and we actually build a program uh, accordingly however uh, 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 the, 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 so there is a program to 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 to, uh, to invite uh, cooperation from the academic community through a, a sponsored project, uh, that dimension mission, and a lot of international participation did come in. However, I was quite disappointed with the fact that the academic community of India did not come forward to participate in this for various reasons. So, so this has been an issue. And, and this is still an issue and this is i think needs to be addressed and that is why uh, when money asked me to talk about it and this, I, I agreed and uh, uh, also because we had certain experience in this uh, this, uh, this 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 thing i may be able to uh, um, give a little bit of insight into how such a program uh, uh, can uh, can possibly work in future uh, and what is required to make it work so this is what i am going to discuss in this uh, in this talk so what is uh, uh, let us start with what a country needs or what uh, what india needs india of course needs because being an agrarian uh, society and our economy depending on the monsoon rainfall the prediction of weather and climate is very important for the users, farmers, fishermen, and policymakers uh, all around. So, uh, a skillful forecast, in reliable prediction, is very much important for. And this has been demonstrated that skillful and uh, and 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 uh, uh, um, uh, and reliable weather and climate forecast uh, uh, benefits the society in a very big way. And further improvement of that will accrue. Uh, more benefits to, uh, to, um, to 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 the users. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the, uh, the how the how do you how do you actually improve the skill of forecast? The, the, uh, historically, over the last fifty years, the weather forecast, for example, is a very a very very uh, um, very interesting story. Uh, it started the the, the forecast, uh, weather forecast, uh, the actual uh, feasible weather forecast was done. Uh, the first forecast was done uh, in 1950 at uh, at uh, Princeton University under the leadership of uh, uh, um, uh, Professor Jules Chani, and that uh, they, they, they demonstrated that okay, we can really make the forecast of. Uh, um, with a skill of about uh, 12 hours uh, skill, um, uh, uh, we, we can useful I mean, skill, uh, we, we can make forecast using numerical weather prediction models. But uh, that was the beginning. But over the last 50, 60 years, uh, uh, this has improved tremendously. And I will give an example of what is the skill of today's forecast. Uh, the, um, uh, uh, so much, and, and this has happened mainly by the my, by a lot of input from fundamental research in atmospheric and oceanic processes and those fundamental research have actually gone into improving uh, in development of models and improving the model skill in, in prediction forecast so fundamental research is important this is uh, i'm going to uh, uh, bring it uh, bring that again towards the later part of the talk so fundamental research is key, but the question is uh, what kind of fundamental research? The fundamental research must be focused towards improving the, uh, or basic research must be focused towards improving, uh, to a requirement 
for improving the for, uh, skill of um, forecast models. So forecast models require a certain type of basic research. Uh, there are also very important basic research, and I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate some of them what they are. What they are. But uh, uh, but uh, but that is the kind where we, have, we can sort of uh, uh, normally we we don't uh, like to put a kind of bound on what kind of basic research that we'll do in academic community, but. Uh, to contribute to this problem, we have to put a, a certain focused effort on basic research, which is required to improve the skill of um, for, um, uh, forecast models. And that, <clears throat> so in order to understand this, what is required to improve forecast model, I need to need to give a, 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 a quick description of what is a forecast system. Uh, and so, I mean, what follows, I will illustrate the components of a weather prediction system and, and the sources of errors that need, that limits our ability to make forecast. And that those errors we need to minimize. And that is how, if we can minimize those errors, then of course we'll increase the scale of forecast. And that is basically the key, 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 key area where we need to do basic research. So, so this case, uh, this case issue is, is I'm, I'm, I'm going to illustrate this problem with the weather forecast, but the issue about climate forecast is also uh, similar. Only the model is more complex, the data simulation system will be more, more complex, but uh, but the, the, the issues are similar. So I will not uh, uh, talk too much about the climate forecast system and what we need to do, but I'll talk about generically uh, what, uh, what we need to do to improve weather forecast, and you will be able to, able to extrapolate that uh, to to the to the uh, issues with the uh, climate forecast. So, what is the weather prediction system? Weather prediction system has a forecast model. This model is the basic uh, basic uh, uh, basic equation that govern the flow uh, 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 of the air, and which is governed by the stokes equation. But it is forced by heating. Mm, uh, so the heat balance uh, uh, at, at, at any point uh, is calculated with a, uh, from uh, uh, solar radiation and then latent heat release from clouds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Many different components. I will mention that in a minute. So and that together with the forcing forcing factors and the, the dissipation factors and the basic uh, nivell stokes equation uh, is the forecast model uh, but this forecast model has to be initiated by the initial condition the initial condition comes from observations so observations must come from uh, the initial conditions are in the form of these components of the winds temperature humidity pressure uh, surface pressure, etc. Uh, so these are the basic fundamental variables which are observed by observing system, both conventionally as and as well as a space-based observation system. They give us the observation globally. That observations we what we call analyze into a, a into a regular grid, uh, and that data then goes into uh, the equation, uh, the uh, forecast model as an initial condition. Then the forecast model is time merged. Time merged to produce forecast uh, for for, for um, time merged or whatever the, uh, whatever lead time ahead, so one day ahead of uh, one to, up to one day ahead, two day ahead, three day ahead, ten day ahead, or fifteen day ahead of time. You uh, time merge it, and that gives you the forecast. So this is the forecast, uh, uh, basically forecast system. So. Uh, that, uh, that system essentially has one core, dynamical core. Dynamical core is nothing but your, uh, your the basic equation, the complete dynamic equation. And then there is a uh, model physics, physics. That is what I said that the forcing and dissipation. Forcing and dissipation uh, are, are, uh, comes from all kinds of model physics. And that has to be uh, formulated separately and integrated into the uh, in, uh, and it has to go to the dynamical equations in right places, uh, and that uh, consists to uh, uh, the forecast uh, model. And that uh, the, the physics part contains radiation budget, the, the the moist processes like cloud processes that give rise to latent heating, and land surface processes like uh, um, vegetation evaporation, soil moisture, uh, so surface processes like soil moisture, uh, and uh, <clears throat> Uh, and and snow 
and their uh, properties of reflection, absorption, etc. That determines the surface temperature and also these fluxes from surface to the upper atmosphere. So all these is physics. So the, from uh, the boundary layer, there has to be mixing from the turbulent mixing that goes into the atmosphere. So there has to be the boundary layer formulation. Uh, so all these are physics work. So the physics can be separated in some sense and put into different modules and those modules can be then linked to uh, the dynamical core appropriately. Now, when you go to a uh, climate model system, then the, we, are, we are more complexities come in, uh, like we have to have ocean. So the ocean will have same kind of uh, model and that model will have a, dyna a similar dynamical core and there will be model physics also in the ocean like mixing in the ocean, like the convection in the ocean of the, um, uh, and, and, and that uh, is a different type of convection in the ocean. So all that is a physics in the ocean and there are also chemical processes in the ocean. So all that has to come, the ocean biogeochemistry has to be added. And the atmosphere, of course, today we have more, a lot of aerosols. Uh, aerosols are coming and affecting the radiation, and the radiation budget and thereby the heat balance. And therefore, the aerosols cannot be neglected today. Um, earlier, only we had, uh, before the industrial uh, um, uh, revolution, we had mostly uh, natural aerosols. But now we have anthropogenic aerosol, uh, aerosol, which is also complicating the heat budget problem. So therefore, we have to take all that into account. So that makes the uh, full model. So there is a dynamical core, there is a physics. Physics. Now, the <coughs> dynamical core is nothing but the your, your basic equations, uh, uh, the fluid dynamic equation, the momentum equations, temperature uh, or energy equation, the humidity equation, the, <coughs> the continuity, uh, continuity equation, and, uh, and surface pressure uh, equation. So, and these are forces. The, uh, on the right hand side, the terms represent the physical processes, forcing and dissipation. So they are uh, they are uh, they are a little bit complicated. Therefore, I have not given in the details of this. Uh, but I will mention that these are very important. Uh, basically, the uh, motion in the atmosphere is essentially due to uh, the heat budget or the um, uh, radiation budget that creates uh, heating uh, gradient. Uh, um, uh, or different places from tropics to um, extra tropics and that heating gradient produces pressure gradient those pressure gradients then drive winds and therefore the circulation takes place so therefore the calculation of the heating grade, heating is is a key 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 effect uh, key uh, key uh, quantity in, in our models modeling problem so what are the challenges? The challenges are, of course, uh, the, the solving the equation itself is itself a challenge, and that uh, because you have to do it in the in a sort of in a discrete manner in the uh, and so the resolution is is very important. And as you go on increasing the resolution, the computational requirement increases. So that is a big big challenge. That uh, in the old days that was a very big challenge, and uh, and. Uh, and that uh, restricted to what kind of resolution I can solve, I can uh, I can solve these equations globally. But today, with high, uh, more and more uh, bigger computing facility available, available, uh, this problem has become reduced to a sort of a minor uh, problem. Uh, more important problem is to do uh, the 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 uh, uh, do, uh, do, 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 do to 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 formulate. Uh, uh, the heating function or the heating, um, uh, heating uh, uh, the uh, heating and dissipation, and that uh, depends on the solar radiation coming in, and the solar radiation then gets scattered and absorbed in the atmosphere. That then goes into um, uh, uh, then the surface gets heated up, whatever is uh, absorbed at the surface. Then the earth radiates as a long uh, in, in the in the long wave radiation re radiates in the long wave radiation, and um, and then. Uh, that then also gets absorbed and, and, and uh, in the in the atmosphere atmosphere due to the greenhouse gases and therefore determines the uh, uh, determines the radiation budget and in addition to that of course the clouds are formed the clouds will produce latent heat release that will add uh, to the heat so finally we have to calculate exact heat balance at every column. Uh, uh, and that that is the big challenge because it is uh, these uh, it, it, it depends on the radiation radiation stratospheric chemistry land surface processes uh, clouds and convection and on the layer fluxes uh, and all these have 
all these processes and aerosols, of course, all these contribute to the heat balance. And that heat calculation, you have to formulate all these in an appropriate manner. Now, in calculation of these uh, heating uh, heating function, uh, at it, it, it is, is, is a big challenge because of the multi-scale nature of the problem. In for, for all of these, radiation as well as um, its clouds and, and, and in boundary layer is a multi-scale problem. The problem is the boundary layer, there, is a, there are larger scale, spatial, so larger scale uh, systems, also there are turbulence, um, and turbulence and the turbulence and uh, larger scale uh, vari variations uh, processes are interlinked. Similarly, the cloud is a, uh, is, a, is, a, is a classic example of multi-scale interaction. For example, the clouds, uh, uh, um, this, uh, this big uh, uh, intertropical convergence zone over a very large area produces latent heat release on a large scale. Okay, that large, large scale affects our climate, the mean conditions and all that. But these, uh, these latent heat release is, 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 is is, is cons uh, in, within this, there are many, many smaller systems which contribute to this large scale. And they are like within this, there are uh, uh, major scale systems like tropical cyclones uh, uh, over many, 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 these big blobs are something like these the tropical cyclones. And then within the tropical cyclones, we have these individual clouds, uh, which are of the scale uh, of, uh, this is like a 10,000 kilometer scale. Tropical cyclones are like 1,000 kilometer scale. So they are mm, uh, 500 kilometer scale. So these are many, many such systems systems within this, then within each tropical cyclones, there are, uh, there are millions of clouds of 10 kilometer scales or one kilometer scale, one to 10 kilometer scales. Then, but the clouds themselves have the raindrops, uh, which are, which require, raindrops are of the millimeter size, but the, each raindrop uh, are, are formed uh, through CCNs, which are of the micron size. So therefore, from micron size, things uh, are organizing the drops which produce the rain, and those drops are in the clouds, which are organized in the form of a kilometer to 110 kilometer, which then are organized into form of a tropical cyclones and major scale systems. And then they are organized into these, these. So the heat, heat, heating function is, 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 is very much a, a multi-scale problem. And so when we do, uh, so therefore it ranges in the cloud problem itself ranges uh, something like uh, 15 order magnitude uh, uh, um, uh, scales. Uh, uh, it, so therefore calculate in a given grid point in the, in the model to calculate the clouds, you have to understand how these uh, different scales interact. Therefore that problem becomes the it's a major problem of our challenge of, of modeling um, weather and climate. That is what is known as parameterization because uh, the model is always uh, always a finite resolution. At finite resolution, you may not be able to uh, uh, definitely, um, we, we not may not, we, we, we are unable to resolve some scales. We can resolve some scales, but we cannot resolve the other scales. The scales that cannot be resolved, they, are, have, they have an impact on the scales that is resolved, but how do we formulate that? And that is what is known as parameterization. So every of these city, we need parameterizations in the radiation budget, we need parameterizations in the clouds, we need parameterizations in the boundary layer turbulence. Uh, that also has to be closed at some point of time. And so therefore, all these requires a certain amount of parameterization. Parameterization means we have to close the system and, at, at some, some point and then say how and the small scales uh, uh, contribution depend on the large scale uh, variables and how much, uh, how can calculate their contribution. Uh, and so that, that is the per, 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 per parameterization. So that requires understanding of this interaction. That is a fundamental research actually. It's a very important fundamental research. So, so, uh, so this parameterization, because parameterization makes a certain amount of approximation, therefore there is a certain amount of, uh, certain amount of approximation in the whole model. The models, uh, weather and climate models can never be perfect in the sense that perfect in the sense that uh, absolutely perfect. There is nothing like absolute perfect. There will always be some errors. The question is, how how can you minimize this error in the model and how can we have a system which will 
come uh, pretty close to what is the observed weather system and what is the observed climate system. How can the model simulate the observed climate system and observe how closely they can. So that is our challenge. Uh, so challenge in uh, cloud parameterization is also another challenge is, 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 is actually uh, uh, um, is that it's actually uh, seeing the old days we had uh, we had climate models which are like 200 kilometer 300 kilometer resolution so we have we have to have a parameterization to resolve all the scales within 200 kilometer resolution but then now the models have increased to 50 kilometer resolution let us say so therefore this same parameterization may not work because you have now resolving some scales but not resolving other scales so parameterization are basically uh, climate model parameterizations are basically resolution dependent in some sense so therefore you have to keep on improving the parameterization and climate model but or you can in, uh, you will have to develop a new parameterization which is kind of uh, resolution independent or or, or tunable for different resolution. So these are also areas of, of uh, big uh, uh, current uh, um, uh, research. And that is important because uh, uh, we are now going into for weather prediction for uh, globally, we, we are going to weather prediction models which are like 10 kilometers. Now, 10 kilometer global models will almost resolve many clouds. Uh, only those one, one kilometer kind of clouds. And then within that, the microphysics may not be resolved, but uh, uh, but it will resolve a lot of sub major scale, major scale systems, uh, thunderstorms, and so on. So, therefore, we don't need to think about those in the parameter. So, the parameterization for these other prediction models must be different. Uh, and whereas the parameterization for the climate models could be different. Uh, and this resolution dependence of parameterization is in, is in that uh, uh, reactive area of research. And this is the way how the research can be, uh, basic research can be done and we then implemented into our models. Um, so also it requires that um, this the whole, whole question of parameterization become a question mark when you go to very fine resolution like a 10 kilometer resolution, then what is the best way of parameterization is still a question mark on how do we do, do that? Can you make that like, like every, every 10 kilometer cloud model? We can put in a sort of a cloud model, which is just 10 kilometer size cloud models. Uh, so you put, uh, uh, 10 kilometer size cloud model and within that cloud model whatever is required is uh, you, you parameterize so there are issues like that and, and these are th things that are i think being talked about and uh, and, and researched there is also other issue about the stochasticity of the clouds the clouds themselves are not given the given the uh, given uh, given a certain uh, large scale uh, large scale boundary uh, large scale condition uh, the, the what type of clouds, like shallow clouds, medium clouds, and tall, uh, deep clouds, how and how many, when they will occur, is some sort of uh, uh, is, 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 is stochastic. In some sort of, they're not, uh, not very predictable, those are. So therefore, the whole parameterization also needs to be built in, needs the, the stochasticity built into this. So these are issues that are actually being talked about. So. So the, where the errors come from? The errors come from the, 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 the initial conditions because the data the errors are, are essentially it observed. Uh, uh, the, uh, there are two sources of error. One is, of course, the initial condition. The initial condition because you have data, there is no observations uh, over. Suppose you have a, a 50 kilometer uh, grid or even 10 kilometer grid, let's say with the prediction model, every 10 kilometer you don't have observation. There is no, no way that you have observation in all those. Therefore, you are interpolating the observations from wherever there is observation. As you can see, the observing natron is sparse. Uh, the sparse, there are gaps in the, over the ocean, big gaps. Uh, and uh, and these have to be, when you analyze these observations in the regular grid, you are making interpolations. And those in making those interpolations, there is always a certain amount of error. And that error goes into uh, the error of the initial condition. And that is called analysis. So the, how best we can do that analysis is important. So therefore, when you have, an, when you, when you, yeah, and of course, the satellites are now adding up a lot of data. Still, there is a lot of gaps and lot of, uh, a lot of areas where there is no data. It will always be there. Even if we have a lot of observations, you can never fill up the uh, globe at the resolution that you want. And that is not uh, feasible. And therefore, always there will be an error. 
Now, when you use this data as initial condition, when you put them into the as an initial condition into the forecast model, what happens is they are not completely balanced. The equations don't this this that that observation that you get in the analysis that you have done, that if you when you put into the equation, they don't completely balance. That is because of this theorem. So that difference between what the model equations want and what the observations give you is an initial error. The model will see that as an initial error, and then as the time progresses, that initial error will go and deteriorate your forecast. So that is the source of initial error. Therefore, more and more data will reduce this. Of course, the, how do we balance that? That is balanced by, do, by doing something called data assimilation. The data assimilation then tries, see if there is an imbalance between the initial gaze or initial data that you give into the uh, model and what the model wants, is somehow it try to minimize by doing, knowing the history of the observation, history of model, what model wants, uh, and uh, knowing observation errors and model errors. And then you can try to minimize by doing something uh, objective uh, objective analysis, you can minimize this difference and therefore minimize this error to some extent. But that is an area of research. Again, this is called data assimilation by doing better and better data and and trying to minimize this error. You can reduce the initial, initial error. If you can reduce the initial error, of course, your skill will improve. The other challenge is, of course, this chaotic nature of, big, uh, nature of the, uh, the weather and climate. Oh, one second, sorry. What happened? I'm sorry. Something. Uh, yeah, uh, your yeah. We can see your screen now. Screen. Okay. 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 Something. You can just go to full yeah. screen again. Yeah, just one minute. Give me something with my uh, PPT. I think I have to close this. Shall I close it and come back? Yeah. Sure, sir. Okay. Okay. Just one minute. What the hell? This is not responding. Give me a minute. It is. Uh, it is getting a little bit. Uh, I'm restarting the system. Yeah. No problem. Okay. In the meanwhile, if anyone has questions, uh, anyone has, could... yeah, yeah, I could, I could do that if there is anyone has a question. Uh, you could either uh, speak uh, by unmuting, or you can type your questions in the chat box. As we speak, it's now raining in Chennai, sir. No, if his machine is rebooted, uh, he'll most probably get cut off. Yeah, I think, yes. Yeah, I wanted to ask him why lateral mixing was separate from everything else. OK. Others, if you have a question, please do type them into the chat box.
I think he's restarting his machine, so he should be back within a minute or so. Sir, you are on mute, sir. We can't uh, hear you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. Okay, now you can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. Let me share the screen again. So, okay. Yeah, we can see the slides now. Okay, okay, okay. Let let, let me let me go back to that. Uh, that there point. was one question from yeah. Ramakrishna. Okay, okay. Uh, Emma, no, no, could you I please... mean, well, yeah. I mean, if you want to do it now, we can do it now. No, earlier when in when you had those uh, when you had the block diagram, uh, you had all the physics and all all of those yeah. were clustered together as one. Right. But you had lateral mixing as a separate entity. I was wondering why that was. Uh... Uh, I'll, uh, where, where did I hear? No, no. I think no, one slide before. Slide, one slide, yeah. I think a slide. No, no, before this. This was, you know, this was very early in the. I, right, I'm right. really sorry, sir. I should have stopped you at that time. And asked. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I'll come back. Shall we come yeah, back? You can, to we that? can come back to it. Yeah, I think okay, you please go okay. ahead with your talk. We, we okay. can come back to it. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so, so the other point is that the, 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 the one other challenge is, of course, these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, the chaos. Or just to, to avoid the, the effect of the uh, deterministic chaos, we so normally do what you call ensemble forecasting. Uh, so that is another challenge that we need, but uh, I think I will skip that. So basically, the main problem is that two types of errors we have. One is the initial error that comes from data, and the other is the model errors. The model errors are comes from your parameterizations, which are the which are the, uh, the 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 where we make approximations in terms of these multi-scale interaction, and so that is a problem. And of course, model errors also come from resolution. Resolutions, uh, the solution of the equations depend on accuracy of the solution of the equations depend on the resolution, and therefore, a higher the resolution, your error becomes reduced. In this, in the solution of the equation, the error reduces. Therefore, that improves also uh, the model error. So the model error comes from two sources. One is from solution of the equation, and the other is from the physical processes. So, but therefore, model errors are more important because model errors keep adding up every time step. You integrate or initial errors are what is added only in the beginning so therefore the model errors are very important we have to minimize the model errors and the the resolution of course has a double benefit because resolution uh, is, uh, is 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 uh, the, depending on the resolution you can resolve the topography very well uh, or not well and if you don't resolve the topography the rainfall local rainfall depends on topography and very much and therefore the, you make a lot of errors in the local rainfall the local rainfall errors lead, leads to the heating errors the heating errors then leads to flow errors and so on so therefore the uh, the um, uh, the high resolution is very important in uh, 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 so the, the, over the last few years, the last uh, last uh, um, uh, last uh, few decades that I mentioned, the improvement in weather forecast has come from all, improvement in all these three different aspects. One of the better observations, uh, the space-based observations, have have improved our initial conditions. Uh, therefore, that has reduced initial error. The improvements in the models themselves, the physical processes, the parameterizations have steadily improved over the last from 1950 to today. Significant improvement has taken place in terms of how you parameterize these physics of the processes, and that has contributed also the availability of the uh, the huge computing facility that we have today. And all these three things have made a significant impact into our improving the uh, weather forecast as well as uh, the climate forecast. So, for example, the power of the observation. Let me give one example of power of these observations, uh, uh, and. Uh, this is the what is known uh, what is the European Central Medium Range Forecast. This is a leading organization who makes a, a forecast in Europe, uh, and they have have a good history of forecast uh, uh, skills. This is a skill of uh, weather forecast in the extra tropics between 20 degree north and let us say uh, 20 degree to polar region, both north and south. And uh, these are uh, skills of three day forecast. Uh, 
this 90% 100% means sort of point correlation of the observed geopotential height and forecasted geopotential height going to 0 0.9, 0 0.95 and all that. Today, uh, to the three-day forecast are like a, uh, like 0.97 correlation. So it's, it's like almost correct, you know, absolutely corrected. Uh, and then the five-day forecasts are like of the, uh, is of the order of like 0.9 correlation and more than 0.9 correlation and so on. So the forecasts have improved tremendously, but the Southern Hemispheric forecast had lagged behind significantly over the whole period uh, on the, uh, compared to Northern Hemispheric forecast. That is because Northern Hemisphere, there's a lot of land, lot of observation systems, as you can see from my other uh, figure that most of the observing systems are in the, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere because of the land being there. And uh, Southern Hemisphere, there are a lot of gaps, and therefore, actually, there are much more error in the initial condition in the Southern Hemisphere, and therefore, the forecast, uh, forecast skill were poorer. But today, they are equally good or better. And how did it happen? This happened because of actual observations. The observations came from the satellite data. Uh, the satellite hugely increased the temperature profile, the hyperspectral radiometers. There are so many satellites with hyperspectral radiometers giving so many temperature profiles over the ocean when you don't need uh, 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 conventional observation. Those hyperspectral, uh, and in the extra tropics, the, that gives you temperature, uh, very accurate temperature distribution. Uh, accurate temperature distribution gives your potential heights, and therefore, your, your wind depressor gradients uh, are correct, the large scale winds are also okay in the extratropics, not in the tropics. Uh, but therefore, extratropical forecasts have tremendously improved because of the in, in, improvement of the, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, observation, in the data that is coming from satellites. But the forecast models are equally important, and maybe maybe uh, models are also much more model and the and this assimilation system. Assimilation system depends on the model or analysis assimilation system, which reduces the imbalance at the beginning. Now today we have a much better system, much better models, much much better assimilation system, and therefore our balancing of the initial condition is much better today. Therefore, reduction of the initial error, which did not happen in the in the in the past because the models were not good. So now one exercise was done by people at ECMWF only, uh, where they took a modern model today and modern assimilation system, went back to for 80s and made forecast again using that system, but uh, uh, using only the data they had uh, at that point of time. Uh, and uh, with that data also, if you make forecast, this data today, that uh, originally the five-day forecast were like 0.6 correlation, right? But if you now have take the more uh, modern model and then bring it uh, to go, uh, take a modern assimilation system, you get 0.8 correlation. So significantly improves, the model improves much better because the model adds up those errors. So if you can model and data assimilation, if you can improve, that will in, uh, reduce the initial error. Also, it will reduce uh, uh, the error building up as you go for uh, go on integrating. So therefore, model contribution seems to be a much more. This is something that I think our Indian meteorologists have not recognized over a long period of time, and that is why we neglected uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the 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 focus on modeling and model development. We thought that observations will solve our problem. No, observations are not going to solve all the problems. The models must be improved. Then only we can do uh, uh, we can we, we can improve this. So this is a very important uh, realization and uh, an important uh, uh, part of that. So therefore, uh, why did it not happen? Uh, uh, how do we you know, improve the models? The improvement of the forecast must be, must be made in the country on the operational forecast. You cannot make improvement in forecast in the country if you different groups try to improve different models. Then it will be diff it is not possible to combine them into the forecast model because each model, the parameterizations are somewhat interdependent. In a, if a particular model has a one radiation parameterization, and the clouds will depend on that parameterization. The cloud parameterization depends on that radiation parameterization. And therefore, if it uh, it has to work on uh, and, and that. And similarly, the cloud parameters, it depends on the boundary layer uh, uh, parameterization, because the, uh, the flux at the boundary, uh, bottom of the cloud depends on the boundary layer fluxes. And therefore, there is this interlinkages. And therefore, if you develop an isolated way, one parameterization, parameterization 
in a particular model, you cannot transport it to another model to give a better result. So therefore, you have always have to work on one system. And that is a key requirement. Uh, and that is, uh, uh, therefore, model development must be done in the country's operational, weather, uh, operational forecast system or forecast model. Uh, Normally, how does it done? This is done basically, basically, basically the, 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 the operational forecast system, like our, our thing, uh, in our case, it is IMD. And then um, then then we have other other uh, MOA systems like ATM uh, helping them, uh, NCMRW, ATM helping them. Uh, but in, 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 in for, for NCEP, for example, NOAA, G, uh, GFDL, uh, and NCAR, they contribute to their uh, their model improvement. So we need uh, these are these are these are basically government system. But how do the uh, how do the academic community uh, get uh, involved? In in India, of course, IITM was set up in 1962, and to help an uh, IMD in all these uh, respects of model development. But for some reason, it did not the synergy between IITM and IMD did not um, uh, develop uh, remain so for uh, over the years, and model development did not happen. Uh, so we had a system that was at when around 2006 uh, we had uh, a rather a rather primitive uh, system of uh, prediction uh, um, and no dynamical forecast or, uh, or, or or seasonal forecast was there. Weather forecast was used by a very simple um, uh, PAT uh, model. Uh, but also, we did not have the competing facility. Elsewhere in the world, advances in weather forecasting uh, uh, aided rapidly advance, uh, by rapidly advancing supercomputing capability. So at that point of time, the total MOES in 2006 and the competing capability was less than one teraflops. And the other other um, centers in the world had uh, forecasting centers had up the order of about uh, one petaflop. Or, or 800 uh, teraflops and one petaflop, that kind of a thing. Uh, this was because, as I said, that somehow we did not recognize the importance of the model. Therefore, there is a there is a uh, big uh, void in terms of global atmospheric. Sir, one quick request. Uh, in in the message that appears, you could click on hide, sir, so that uh, uh, this uh, uh, okay. There is a message that appears. Right, 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 yes. right, right, right. Perfect. Thank you. Right, right. Okay, okay, okay. So let me go quickly. I think I'm taking uh, more time. So, so the MOES was born, and the MOES due to monsoon mission brought in certain amount of energy synergy between these institutions and the monsoon mission. Actually, uh, this, these different institutions work together, and there was uh, there was uh, there was progress. Uh, but. Uh, 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 but I must say that during that, uh, the, 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 the Dr. Silas Nayak's role was very important because he convinced the government to uh, importance of this uh, this kind of a collaboration with the other uh, other community and um, and and uh, for for rapid improvement of the system and uh, generated the necessary fund. So the computing facility also was improved over the uh, over, over the years uh, at, at at IITM. Which used to be when I joined had uh, 2006, uh, we had a sun solar system which is less than one petaflop, one teraflop. So then today we have a cray machine with about 4.5 4 uh, petaflops. So in addition to that, and CMRW has a 2.5 petaflops machine. And so the computing facility today, I think, this is all planned during our monsoon mission phase one uh, and uh, approvals were taken. And, uh, and I think this has dramatically changed our capability of doing uh, high-end uh, uh, modeling. Uh, operationally today, I think I, I, IMD, uh, IMD has a whole bunch of, uh, bunch of uh, prediction system. Um, I'll not go into details of this, but these are, I, I'd say that they're almost state of the art, uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, mm, mm, uh, all these were uh, operation tested at IIT, IMD, uh, IITM during this period between 2006 and 14, uh, where then uh, then transferred to IMD and operationalized. Of course, I, during the whole period, there was a constant interaction. Uh, uh, and I think this is a this is a very a great a great achievement that anybody would say. Uh, but can we uh, can we? Uh, <coughs> 
But in addition to that, I must say that it, it, uh, IMD also developed one uh, one tropical cyclone prediction system, which was largely based on IMD's in-house uh, in-house research. But also, uh, this is a good example of where the, uh, the academic community input were gone in. Uh, IIT Delhi uh, with IIT Delhi, they had a collaboration, and this through that uh, collaboration, I think a lot of academic input has gone in. And finally, this prediction system is quite enviable today. It's a very good prediction system, and they are doing uh, great work. Uh, and with the monsoon mission models uh, that has given a good large scale boundary condition, which has much better large scale this large scale uh, circulations, which are much better uh, the uh, the scale of the cyclone prediction also have improved significantly so do we think that we can relax and and say uh, the complacent be complacent absolutely not because this is only the beginning we need to improve this now to do that we have to do this uh, we have to work on this system operational prediction system and we have to do in a very systematic way and and that is where i think the economic community can uh, come in um, so uh, there is a lot of scope for there's a lot of bias because we have chosen a particular model for this monsoon mission uh, and we have done some uh, considerable amount of in-house improvement in terms of physics packages, uh, physics uh, parameterization and there it has increased from uh, improved from where it started with uh, and build up to a level which is much better than where it started with but there is still a lot of a uh, lot of um, uh, biases of this model and there is a scope for improving those biases and improvement of those biases is definitely going to improve the skill of both uh, weather prediction as well as uh, uh, the climate prediction uh, so um, so how can we go about doing this uh, uh, there are two more important i feel that there are two areas where very important improvements are required right now in the cfs gfs system one is the cfs gfs system is 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 is, is a hydrostatic model and therefore one of the impo important part is, uh, is that it has to be converted into a non hydrostatic model and because then we have to have we can use that the same kind of core into regional model of high resolution much much, much higher resolution to improve the high in intense uh, uh, the uh, the weather system forecasts so extreme event forecast will improve if we have a same physics model in an hydrostatic form today we are what we are using is using is large scale conditions from the uh, from the zfs model and then using a wrf model to do the regional forecasting i think there is different like, different some differences in the physics that might have an uh, had a problem in terms of improving the uh, uh, scale so if the physics is same from the regional model and the and regional non hydrostatic model and the hydrostatic uh, larger global model then you can explain uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, the skill of the extreme events will possibly improve. Uh, so, action model, uh, we have to have a lot of, uh, I think there is a lot of, no work has been done during this, uh, this period. Not much work has been done on the ocean model improvement and the ocean model has a lot of biases in SST and we need to improve that and that is where the mixing uh, in the regions of uh, like Bay of Bengal is very important and we have to parameterize them correctly and so there is a lot of work to be done on the improvement of the ocean model these two things can be focused and we can we can work on uh, problems. So I propose a kind of joint MOES academic community venture to improve this. So let us make the CFS GFS forecast system as a community forecast system and make it as a community model and let uh, help uh, uh, <coughs> MOES uh, uh, help the, uh, the academic uh, sorry invite the academic community to work on this uh, and then uh, uh, then then try to improve the very certain identified aspects of this uh, community forecast system and then it will build up uh, if we work on the same model if different uh, uh, different groups also work on different aspects of this model we will be able to uh, we will be able to take them forward and integrate with the forecast model system uh, unless different groups uh, 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 work on the same model, we will not be able to bring them together, and that is uh, that is a requirement. That uh, so uh, uh, from the um, uh, what is the role of the academic community? So academic community must be willing to uh, uh, 
it is over the last 25 years we see that uh, the academic community here in the weather and climate science has improved has has expanded and there are a lot of uh, groups now today in the country where a lot of uh, these groups are working on fundamental problems uh, uh, related to monsoon or weather and climate prediction in this region but uh, and and i see, as i note i i, I and, and in fact, as a result of what has happened is if I see scientific papers published in international reputed journals over the last uh, two decades has significantly improved compared to earlier times because now different people are working in different uh, institutions in the country uh, in the related areas. Uh, so I think this is a very great thing. But unfortunately, that is not has gone into work forecast improvement. So uh, the problem is that uh, the academic community tends to work on very specific process related studies and which no no link to the forecast system it is these are all all important interesting um, basic research but uh, normally they don't have a, a link to the forecasting the national forecast system model uh, so how can we make them they can we can do that only if we work on the, the forecast system related process studies that can go into uh, the forecast model improvement uh, it is not that many. Um, some of the some of the, some of these uh, science groups do work with uh, ocean atmosphere couple models, but they do basically science studies. They don't really develop them further. So if I have a community model and we have a goal to improve it, so then we can systematically slowly improve that model by collaborative work. So this is something that uh, when I saw the, your your fluid and uh, the fluid flows uh, program, I also felt that uh, this is one area that has not is is not there in your program. So I think uh, if we can build in an area like that, it may be difficult. It may not. We may not have expertise, but this is something that is desirable. So uh, what are the potential problems and roadblocks? The potential problems uh, is. These model developments are essentially challenging and they take an incremental effect and incremental improvement at the time. And the academic community uh, do not feel compelled to invest the time and effort that may be required to do this and the time that will take uh, to get a publication because these are a very, very slow process. How can uh, how can uh, uh, MOES facilitate this? MOES should facilitate this by uh, identify some development issue clearly and provide uh, generous funding uh, through proposals and invite them uh, to work on it. So academic institutions themselves can also give some extra weightage because this is a problem in the academic institution. Our the career development depends on the publications and so on, and that depends. If that is slowed down, then the person may not be uh, may not be interested in really investing time on that. So the institutions must have a mechanism to increase that, and by giving certain weightage to publications or or national model development. Uh, issues, uh, if there is publications can be given more weightage and therefore institutions can encourage them, the MOEs can give funding. So through that possible, it may be possible to make it work. Acad <clears throat> uh, uh, the academic community uh, have also be uh, has to be, so, so one question is on what basis MOEs will give substantial funding to for such things. So academic community must show sincerity of intent. They have to somehow show that they're serious about doing what they are doing. Also, they have to build up credibility in model development. Without some experience in the model development, how will the MOEs be able to give funding? So even before joining to a big project with MOEs, some small projects on model development uh, you, you have to demonstrate so that the credibility is established that you will. So I think these are some things that we have to work on. Uh, uh, so MOEs uh, in its own turn should f should think about a big project, a long term project, uh, uh, something like Monsoon Mission Project in a slightly different form. I can come up with here. I have just said it is a, uh, it is a, um, uh, it is joint venture between um, um, MOEs and academic community. But we can come up with a, a nice new term, but. The point is that we should have a focused project that is long-term projects uh, with sufficient funding so that uh, that can continue not just over this uh, this secretary's period but even beyond that and if, if you can generate that kind of a project then probably it will, it will have a chance to 
uh, chance to do uh, discontinue and do this. And but there is maybe also other issues from MOES organization that the MOES scientists from NCMLW, IITM, and NCOIS may be a little bit concerned about their uh, credit sharing and their academic, their uh, career, career, uh, uh, how it will affect their career um, uh, path. And uh, the MOS leadership must allay these fears and assuring that success of these kind of ventures will pos positively impact their um, career advancement. So these are things that administratively and can be uh, sort of uh, um, um, uh, 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 sort of uh, 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 taken care of, and uh, and and this encouragement. If the philosophy vision is created, how to support each other and get engaged with each other in a more uh, meaningful way, then I think there is a chance that uh, academic community can contribute to this. So with that, I'll stop. Thank you very much. I think uh, I took uh, more time than I thought I would take. But I can still, uh, if it is OK with uh, money, we can still have questions. Yes, sir. Thank you. No problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think we can still take uh, some questions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for that uh, interesting talk and talking about the importance of interaction between MOES and the academic institutions. So the floor mm -hmm. is now open for uh, questions. There was uh, one question in the beginning from Professor M. Ramakrishna. Probably yeah. we could start there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, in comparison to your later part of the talk, that was a relatively trivial question. But uh, uh, no, no, the, 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 let me just since you're here, yeah. I was just, I'm very happy that you have talked about because these are issues that are always there with respect to uh, various organizations, uh, progression of uh, people that are in the actors involved and uh, how it impacts uh, collaborations and so on. Yeah. So in that context, if the idea that you have a common platform to which everybody uh, contributes is, a, is, is the way to go. I mean, that is the direction. That is very clear. Mm. But how does one get access to? Is there a, a smaller toy platform that uh, you know, a model platform that academics can uh, use, uh, which uh, to which they can contribute? And uh... yeah, I think the model model is uh, model is the entire uh, you know WRF development model. So WRF was made and uh, uh, is, is is very simple. It is not very difficult, but. Uh, certain uh, um, methodology uh, uh, has to be uh, built in so uh, uh, it, so the NCAR made the WRF as a community model so it allowed everybody to work on it of course uh, they uh, some of them could work on NCAR computer but some of them work in their own computer right. so but uh, the the basic platform uh, was created okay the platform is the same model and it was documented properly so now we have to do that we have to use this model as sort of uh, document it properly and uh, and make it transparent to all users so, and also made it interactive in so that they can put modules modules back and forth and 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 test the simulations uh, so these are certain technical issues that right, that, right. That, is, that is that is doable that is no, not but that is that is something that is that is something that is either already available or will be available no no it is not said. available no it has oh, to be built it, it has, has to, to be, be done built. okay yeah it has no, to be yeah. built uh, unfortunately right. this is not a community model this right, is right. Some model that was developed by NSAP and we right. brought in we worked ourselves uh, very hard to to improve it, but uh, there is still. If we want to make it community model, some work has to be done. It is not a bit, not a, not it is something, not a space science. It it is doable. It is right. just that technically we have to organize it, right, and right. and there is already a lot of computing power in the in the in the MOS system, and many it should be made available because. I don't think uh, MOS has today enviable computers, uh, computation uh, power, and they are, they, I'm not sure they are, they, are, they are fully utilized. They may say they are very fully utilized, but I think there they are, they are definitely much better way of utilizing that computer power. And part of that can be, can be made available to the academic community to test the improvement. In addition to that, uh, the, uh, com uh, the academic community in, in many institutions have their own computing power. And right. those can be can be enhanced through the project support can be enhanced to some extent so that they can do their own developmental uh, pro, uh, project. Only the only the technology technicality of uh, com, uh, communicating 
uh, and or uh, or or inserting these developments into the system has to be built up and that can be built up there is no no issue about that there is only a technical issue okay so, so yeah, it is it is the field. associated uh, suggestion that i would have possibly at some point this uh, if such a platform is available that you know you have some kind of a workshop for uh, the academic community so that they know how to use or how to access exactly exactly and, exactly uh, this has to be made so this is the right. responsibility of the mo yes right. mo has to set up this and uh, I, I i think uh, there are people uh, i i saw uh, people from, uh, people there in mos organization who can actually do it but then we have to focus on that uh, and this and, and a plan has to be made that okay this is what we want to do yes and, sir and just a follow up a follow up suggestion that then you you subsequently have every year or every two years mm. so that people who are working on these uh, you know come back and report what they have done in the last one year absolutely i said that i mentioned somewhere that there's a, a, a external independent uh, supervisory system should be there we, that will uh, supervisory or review system should be there so that uh, this can be seen how different people are uh, different people are contributing to it and what they are feeling what are the challenges or how they they can be improved so this should be a sort of uh, um, annual meeting uh, right. or, and, or, and, and if you make it like a conference yeah. or something you know then they correct. may be able to get academic credit for it and the other aspect that you are talking about may be addressed correct correct so I, th the, uh, 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 I think so i think so i think it is doable but it, there are some challenges uh, technically the mos has to has to get funding uh, under the uh, the present situation i don't know that but i think the vision is put together uh, there is a possibility and the academic community also as i said it has to show their uh, um, uh, the seriousness of intent and uh, credibility right and uh, so this thing has to work both ways it cannot yeah, yeah, work no, one way matter of trust i mean you yeah. have to build trust on both sides i mean that's yeah, basically yeah. you have to build trust yeah. it's a wonderful talk sir thank you very much for thank, thank, thank you thank you uh, are there any other questions? So there was one question on the chat box uh, from Jitendra. Uh, it says, will improvement in coupled regional models mm. be more useful for the Indian monsoon than the global models? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because uh, mm, uh, the, uh, the regional models, a uh, couple regional models, uh, uh, Basically, the the uh, ocean system um, is uh, on, on a on a specially climate scale. It is it is not very regional in the sense that the global global circulation, both in the atmosphere and the ocean, affect the regional circulation in a very important way. So I am not a too great fan uh, for for uh, for using regional models. Uh, to improve the system, but uh, you can you have to first improve the the global system, and uh, and then to to improve locally some forecast capability, you can have a regional model, and regional model, uh, uh, regional model can regional couple model as well, uh, but regional couple model will have their own 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 issues. Uh, similar to similar problems of the regional atmospheric model, uh, um, uncoupled atmospheric models. Uh, but uh, I think the first we need to solve this is re, uh, in the coupled climate global systems, the data assimilation, the coupled data assimilation is not done today. In India, we are, we are very far behind. Even globally, it is in the beginning. So we need to do coupled data assimilation on a global scale and uh, test from fundamentals to applications uh, uh, in the in the real uh, uh, system seasonal forecast system so i think that is a key requirement rather than developing a regional model regional model you can go on developing but uh, sort of regionally you might be uh, be able to further improve a little bit but the basic improvement has to come from the global model uh, because it is the large scale is what is feeding you to the regional. If there, there are large scale errors, uh, uh, the regional models cannot alleviate them uh, because they will be in the seasonal time scale. They will go on penetrating those errors into the into the system uh, and their and 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 in, in, in within this regional system and their, and thereby affect their forecast. So 
uh, the, the improvement in the weather prediction also has, has taken place through the improvement of the global model. Regional models give you a little bit of extra in the very small, like, <coughs> excuse me, like uh, extreme events. Uh, <coughs> very fine scale extreme events or the orographic rainfall. Those kind of thing, the the original models give you a little better handle on that. But uh, but but the the final uh, scale of forecast is going to depend on the boundary conditions or the large scale uh, model that uh, going to give you. And therefore, improvement of the large scale model is our key. Mm. Yeah, thank you, sir. Are there other questions from the audience? Yeah, Devasis. Devasis. Hi, Devasis. Yeah, good afternoon. Ah, you are you are there. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> listening with great interest. Uh, uh, thank you. So, can you can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Go ahead. So, uh, we would like to hear. I think most people here would like to hear uh, something about time scales. So. You mm. showed great improvement in day five forecast and so mm, on. Mm, 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 As mm. you go to longer time scales, mm. uh, coupling with the ocean becomes important, mm. uh, etc. So, mm. what are the what? Where are the real? Where is the real need for improvement? So, if you can comment briefly on that. Okay. So, so the basically, uh, uh, I started with the atmospheric model improvement, and, uh, and that is uh, uh, <coughs> that is demonstrated amply today by uh, by uh, through uh, an atmospheric model itself, where we give the boundary conditions as as kind of fixed. They assume that because the time scale of atmosphere atmospheric systems are of the order of uh, two to five days, two to seven days. Um, and this kind of system, the ocean and atmosphere does interact, but they still have a certain amount of persistency uh, during that period. And therefore, even if you fix it, you don't make a hell of a lot of error. But uh, uh, but when you go to systems like the sub-seasonal oscillations, like intra-seasonal oscillations, uh, where they're forecasting the active and break spells, then you are talking about going to two, two weeks to three, uh, one month duration. During that period, the ocean changes do take place, and therefore we have to we have to take into account the uh, the, the the interaction between the ocean and the atmosphere. Therefore, when we go to really uh, really uh, the the intraseasonal kind of forecast, the, the extended range forecast, then uh, we we must we must by necessity go into coupled ocean atmosphere system, and therefore we have to have coupled initialization coupled. Uh, uh, you know, coupling and, and all the uh, couple model. So, and then beyond going that to seasonal forecast and to uh, seasonal forecast, obviously we need that. So this is a kind of uh, demarcation. Even on a, day, uh, on, a, on, a, on a weather forecast time scales today, um, today the, the, uh, the big uh, the, the community who, are, uh, who have enough computing power are going for a couple models. But there is a balance between the, that because there are certain systems like the tropical cyclones can locally in, in affect the sea surface temperature even on a time scale of about two, three, five days. So therefore, that can still have an impact on the evolution of the tropic, uh, 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 tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclone life cycle sometimes lasts for about 10, 15, 20 days because they move from here and there and then go to another place. So in the whole life cycle, the SST variations could influence the tropical cyclone, the uh, energy uh, uh, intensification as well as their uh, uh, direction. So that, uh, therefore, in principle, even the weather prediction model does uh, ultimately have to go into a coupled ocean atmosphere model. Of course, when you do coupled ocean, ocean atmosphere model, you give you, you add a certain the coupled models have a certain problem about what you call uh, 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 
uh, response. So, so, so it doesn't. It 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 it, it takes certain uh, time to come to an equilibrium, and that sometimes can affect the short term forecast. So therefore, these uh, these are uh, these are a crucial uh, balance that we will have to make. Uh, what is the best uh, 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 sort of uh, system to do our short term forecast and 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 uh, longer term forecast like? In intraseasonal like active break cycles, we definitely have to go into um, go into couple models. So, so these are issues there. I did not go into that because of uh, sort of sort of time. But uh, basically, the 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 philosophy of uh, of where the errors come are similar. Uh, only thing is that we have to understand um, uh, in 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 forecast of weather or. Uh, extended range prediction of active and break spells or <laughs> seasonal forecast. Uh, what we are trying to predict and uh, who, um, um, how the initial errors will affect them, or how the models error affect them. So, for example, in seasonal forecast, the models you have to integrate the models for about forty-five days or uh, or so. Then the model errors will build up more. So we have to uh, we have to we have to understand how can we reduce this error over a longer period of time. So the short time three day forecast or a five day forecast, maybe the model errors will build up that much less. So therefore, uh, we have to understand managing the errors or reducing the errors. Those are the issues actually, research issues. How we can in different kind of framework, how we can uh, reduce the uh, uh, errors. So philosophically. Uh, question is uh, similar, but in details there are some differences. Mm. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, so there, there, are, there was a comment and a question on the chat box. Okay. Ashish, Ashish K Mitra says very good proposal. It needs further development and dialogue. Academics mm. community can contribute beyond paper publishing towards operational model and DA development so there is a comment okay. from him okay. a question Good. from kalyani sandeep okay how to check a model the improved skill of the model in an area where observations are not available okay that is a good question uh, mm, well uh, you can't if you don't have observations you can't uh, can't uh, uh, can't really do much but uh, we have to combine in space based observations now there are many space based observations today cover uh, cover uh, um, the globe uh, and therefore uh, now if you have to uh, if you like i said uh, that in extra tropics uh, the large scale rossby waves are very large scale and therefore um, they 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 are all over the ocean uh, but even if there is uh, no uh, genuine genuine uh, uh, I mean the uh, traditional observations over the southern hemisphere, ocean, but there is a lot of satellite data. Though the lows and highs of the weather systems in the southern hemisphere can be can be tracked by satellite data, and therefore you can validate them over the ocean. There is no data, but there is space data, and from that data you can find lows and highs and so on and so forth. The geopotential height data is very good, so you can validate the forecast over the ocean. You cannot say that the data is not there. If there is absolutely no data, either either either, either space-based data or, uh, or, 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 or 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 conventional data, obviously you cannot validate. You have to validate uh, with the analysis. Analysis analysis is what uh, you you do by interpolating the data from uh, from uh, from. Uh, uh, wherever the data is available and where there is no real data at all, then you and uh, you interpolate them and find uh, 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 data, uh, find uh, 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 observations in that region where there is no data, but consistent with the data that is elsewhere there, and consistent with the model uh, which will expect uh, the data over there. The model, see the, this data assimilation problem or the analysis, dynamical analysis, it does. What it does is that suppose there is a big gap data, then uh, then it, it it gives a uh, uh, initial guess, and uh, and then the model produces a forecast which will be uh, short forecast, very short forecast, one hour or, two or three hour forecast that will give you what is the values of the variables that is expected in that region, and that is essentially 
uh, is is consistent with the model equations, uh, but also consistent with whatever the data is in the surrounding regions. So that is the best guess about what is observation at that point. So you'll have to validate uh, validate uh, the data or the, or the with, with that analysis in that uh, that region. So that's the that's the best way you can do. Of course, it, it is still not exact observations, but I think that's as as good as as close as we can come in. Mm -hmm. So on, on a related note, there is a comment from Indira Rani that says uh, reanalysis data sets can also be used for validation purpose. That's not exactly I mentioned. That is yeah. that is exactly exactly I mentioned. So that is, but we have to remember that you know some some variables that are the model biases can affect those uh, affect those uh, analysis and reanalysis. Uh, sure. So we must be careful about it. But uh, but. Uh, if uh, there are certain variables where there is a lot of observ real observations have gone over uh, over the whole, like temperature, for example, uh, uh, temperature now uh, observations, satellite observations have gone on over a whole globe. Large number of temperature profiles have gone in. So therefore, interpolation in in some areas, dynamical interpolation using the model in some areas will be very close to what actually you will actually observe. Uh, but suppose there is a field uh, like uh, Aerosols, for example, and there is so much of space-time variability. Uh, the 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 analysis will not be able to do uh, a good job in that. Uh, even if whatever model you have, chemical models also will have a lot of problems and so on. But for example, the humidity field, uh, for example, may have a little bit of difficulty because. But today, today slowly humidity data is also more humidity profiles are now going into the analysis. So humidity uh, analysis has improved. So like that, we are improving the analysis considerably. But there are gaps. We must understand where there are gaps and which are, what we can use and what we cannot use as as as, as, as observations from real hmm. So I had a, a question. You had a couple of uh, recommendations in your uh, talk, like. Right. Right. going towards a non hydrostatic model right. do you have a comment on uh, what could be done about uh, the observational program to contribute towards uh, forecast improvement well uh, that is a uh, uh, that is a difficult question in the sense that uh, there are different observations may be required for different uh, uh, different aspects so, um, uh, like uh, in the in, in in the ocean model, ocean model, we realize that uh, the vertical mixing is uh, in a in a freshwater region like Bay of Bengal or North Atlantic um, uh, are, are are very uh, uh, um, uh, uh, very important, and there there are a lot of uh, lot of uh, biases are there in those and they are not applicable in some uh, most of the regions so therefore there is a great need to improve that so for that obviously we need to understand how these uh, uh, how this happens in this region so, so therefore there was, a, there was a big program and i think you were part of that the basis was part of, has been a part of that and then a lot of a lot of uh, uh, measurements of the microstructure of the salinity and temperature in this region and their uh, spatial spatial and temporal structures have been measured and these together with some of the uh, really um, turbulent measurements uh, turbulent scale measurements uh, which gives us a uh, gives us a framework to start uh, some such uh, 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 development of new or or improved um, uh, mixing parameterization schemes. Uh, so that I think is 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 a good uh, good uh, good model. Uh, but uh, uh, as I said, these uh, uh, do not <clears throat> translate to a parameterization immediately. It ne needs a sustained uh, sustained uh, uh, um, uh, work in the same area uh, by a group of people um, uh, working both observations and the modeling. Uh, to improve that parameterization, so uh, I hope that is going to happen. Uh, but uh, uh, but like that, in atmosphere there is uh, there is uh, there is a need for improving this uh, cloud parameterization, and and India was uh, um, 
uh, uh, was lagging behind in terms of observation in terms of the microphysics of clouds. And during uh, over this uh, uh, monsoon mission project, we have done a great work in uh, uh, on on uh, collecting a lot of data in this region uh, on the cloud microphysics uh, using some a program called Kypex. So. So the Kypex is is, is again a, a, a sort of trying to understand the microphysics and the large scale circulation and the small scale uh, um, uh, turbulent structures within the cloud are all measured simultaneously so that we can do but uh, uh, do a better parameterization. So some development has taken place there, but still there is a lot more to do. We have not done what we have done. We have invested a lot of. Uh, lot of uh, resources and human resources and uh, other observational data have been collected but the breakthrough has not come uh, and we still need to work on already available data there's a lot of available data i think they have not been worked uh, worked, uh, uh, worked up, uh, properly and enough uh, with enough uh, insight uh, of developing so there is work to do there but in addition to that you have to identify in a very, very specific uh, um uh, uh, if there is other areas where you can you need data then you have to think about it uh, which is the and that can come from um, a, a a look at the biases of the model now the problem is that when you try to develop uh, improve this model system we have to improve the biases of the model so that is one study that we already did and now as we improve go on improving the model and then you have to keep on doing what is the remaining bias now and then you have to make hypothesis what is the what uh, where the problem is coming from why this biases for example often we have seen that there is a huge bias of uh, uh, of on, on, month, on seasonal time scale and there is a significant out to one to two degrees uh, 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 bias in sst uh, in some region, cooling in some region, warming in some other region, there is a structured bias. The question is, where? how does it come from? Where does it come from? If you can make a hypothesis of where does it come from and uh, what is needed to be done, then you might have to actually think about what new observations. Can we do this, uh, solve this with available observations? If not, then you have to think about what new observations that is required to solve that problem. So. This cannot be generalized. It has to be uh, has to be in a in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a problem oriented, and that has to come. Also, we should see what data that we already have in the monsoon mission. We have collected a lot of data. Now, based on the data, can we do something improvement in the model model parameterization? There is a question we have to we have not uh, I think answered that question. Um, and to do that, what needs to be done? Uh, so these are the kind of issues that uh, I think this brainstorming is required uh, to 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 all these issues, and there is a lot of dialogue is required from uh, from the MOES organizations as well as uh, this community. Mm. <laughs> we can carry forward our discussions uh, when you visit uh, Chennai. Sure, sure. I'd love to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, there, maybe there. Are, sorry, if you have the time, there are a couple more comments and questions. Is okay, there... and I have no problem unless you okay. have it. Okay, so maybe we will take these up. Uh, Indra no. Rani has a comment saying another proposal we can do is the observing system simulation experiment. OSSEs, which simulates the future observations, which are important for NWP data assimilation, particularly space based. Good. Uh, I think that is that is uh, we already. Uh, <clears throat> uh that is a good comment and i think these are issues that is continuing it is not uh, new uh actually we already know certain things that we need from space based but uh, uh the the, the uh, one of the thing that we need from the monsoon perspective is which i have been uh, um, arguing for a long time but uh, it hasn't taken off uh, uh, is vertical profiling of winds uh, from space uh, and uh, uh, globally, there is a, there is a program, but uh, we started this discussing this several years ago. Uh, but unfortunately, it just hasn't taken taken off um, in India. Um, uh, so because this is something, uh, and OSSC has been done regarding this kind of experiment. That if we had, uh, uh, if we had uh, a good 
low level uh, wind observations uh, when there is a lot of cloud over the indian ocean basis it will improve the cyclone genesis forecast uh, 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 much better Mm. And because it is the it is the low level convergence that uh, near the surface uh, is what affects the development of the cy tropical cyclones. And unfortunately, during tropical cyclone uh, during during monsoon time, the, it is cloud covered. So the normally the infrared or um, or lidars cannot see uh, what is below, and therefore uh, these uh, these instruments cannot really measure the winds at a low level. And that is very critical. Uh, uh, and but uh, the global community also has not found a solution to this. Uh, they have come up with a global uh, um, instrument, which is through uh, lidars, uh, through uh, through uh, through to which is lidar-based instrument that can see only when there is a clear sky. So there is a need that we know, but this is a challenging problem. Uh, but uh, but I think we need to. Keep on talking about it and then sensitize. Some of the scientists actually convince uh, the government, uh, but uh, we convince this through. But somehow it is not being followed up uh, in terms of uh, um, in, in terms of uh, uh, pushing so that this program has to has to start. Because uh, <clears throat> so that is one 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 in terms of observation. As you say, this is one observation. In fact, uh, uh, if have people like you. Can think about it. I think this is a very big problem. The particle profiling of winds can really improve uh, if we can come up with a solution. Uh, some sort of uh, uh, like trim, if we can have a, a vertically pointing radar uh, which can give us uh, uh, winds at low level through. But I think there are a lot of challenges that people have talked to me about uh, and which have not been able to sort of come up with a conceptual. Mm, framework uh, how to do it so mm. when you say low level what kind of altitudes uh, do you have so in mind? these are like uh, you know uh, 1 km 2 km 3 km this way the one uh, the this is near the surface so the scattering uh, uh, um, uh, the scatterometer does give us some uh, surface uh, ocean surface winds but we like like boundary layer winds this 850 millibar winds and 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 like uh, 1 km 2 km kind of winds those are very critical for the low level moisture flux the the low level convergence uh, is what is going to trigger this uh, this convection uh, and, and and intensify it and so you know, that vorticity of that is what we need that vorticity measurement uh, so you need a fine scale um, you know uh, something like 24 kilo, 25 km by 25 km scale we need winds uh, just like scatterometer but at, at a higher high, higher height uh, about one kilometer, two kilometer. So that, and of course, if we have a, a higher height, also it is profiling is good and useful. But if we can have even the low level winds uh, at one to two kilometer, that itself will make a tremendous difference uh, in terms of. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, sir. So the last couple of comments. Uh, uh, Gibbs George says, is there any possibility for reliable satellite-based subsurface ocean observations in near future? Mm. Uh, I'm not an expert, and uh, maybe Devasis can say something about it. <clears throat> uh, um, uh, Devasis, you want to make a uh, comment? I'm not, comment? I'm not aware, but people have toyed with the idea of using mm. some mm. sort of airborne laser systems to try and identify mixed layer depth in the ocean. Mm. That's an important mm. thing that does, doesn't come from today's satellites. Mm. 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 So something like... Uh, <clears throat> Something like this profilers uh, in the ocean, what you call Argos. Uh, so the principle of how uh, obviously it is very hard to do it from satellites. So this is a something in situ base. Uh, very hard. It's a very conducting. Hard, very, it's a conducting mm. fluid. So mm. <laughs> the electromagnetic mm. radiation doesn't penetrate deep into the conducting fluid. The other thing that's coming up is the high resolution ocean, uh, high resolution sea level measurements that will come up very mm. soon mm. with this year mm, mm, mm. So that will give us information about eddies that we don't see at present from satellites mm. small mm. already and mm. people have a lot of uh, hope that it will it will change our view of how much more variability there is in the ocean at small see, 
um, money and, uh, and and some of, some of you the experts uh, you know, uh, with lot of engineering background i think one thing is uh, is missing in our country over the last two three decades i have not seen any fruitful discussion into what kind of um, uh, large scale uh, satellite based observation that you can do both in atmosphere and the ocean uh, there was there used to be uh, this kind of thinking brainstorming and uh, what uh, what see i have not seen in the last uh, two decades not a single uh, measurement a new measurement that is going into satellites from indian origin uh, in in an atmospheric uh, um, uh, to improve atmospheric measurements uh, similarly in ocean measurements i don't know i, th I think after um, so we have not done anything on the microwave uh, microwave business and we have stopped this so there is a lack of a vision into how we go uh, how to go about improving or, or coming up with new ideas from indian uh, indian origin so, um, and uh, uh, there is there is little talk between ISRO and uh, and the academic community, including IMD. I don't think IMD is now um, giving giving uh, what advice IMD is giving them. Uh, so what is this between ISRO and MOES? We need more discussion into into what kind of new observation that we can we can come up with uh, to improve uh, both uh, simulation and forecast of uh, the weather and climate phenomena. So I think there is a larger need of uh, that also is. Uh, Google uh, Megat Megatropic was an attempt. Uh, right. a very nice concept. Mm. I yeah. understand. And yeah. uh, after that, what happened? It's been I, quite some time. Yeah, it's been quite some time. And I have not seen any follow up. Um, so, so um, okay. And, okay. So, Thank you. yeah, both both ISRO and MOES is uh, part of our research initiative. So, hopefully, mm -hmm. we can make some progress in that direction. Oh, that will be great. Yeah. yeah. So the, the last couple of comments, resolution independent cloud parameterization, is it already developed or is it underway? That's a question from Kalyani Sandeep. Well, uh, I don't know, but I th I know that uh, uh, there is uh, there is some work going on in different uh, in, uh, research organizations. People are working on it. Uh, I cannot tell you latest uh, because I am uh, a bit out of circulation. So, <laughs> so I am not uh, quite uh, uh, conversant to it. Uh, what is the latest? But this is definitely an area where uh, uh, I have I have uh, uh, hard people. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I have talked to people who have been thinking and doing work on this. But what is the latest? Uh, I'm sorry, I may not be able to give you the. Uh, give you the uh, very good update on that. Mm. So this is the last question, and then we can uh, carry forward the discussion later. Mm -hmm. GBS George has asked, uh, how far is the importance of the global subsurface ocean observations in mm -hmm. prediction of long time scales beyond season? What is this? Say that again. Uh, what is the? How? What is the importance of the global subsurface ocean observations? Mm -hmm in prediction of long time scales beyond season okay uh, obviously uh, uh, global subsurface observations are uh, uh, very important as you know the ocean is is kind of two layer system the upper layer and the lower layer and the time scales and the history memory of, uh, of the upper layer is is rather relatively short but short means it is on the time scales of, uh, of, of months to months to a year but the lower t lower layer if you consider just two layer ocean the lower layer might come to equilibrium uh, over a much longer time scale so therefore uh, therefore uh, so uh, uh, so um, in kind of seasonal forecast the upper layer is more uh, more uh, uh, more uh, more important and uh, but for, for now we are talking about decadal forecast uh, decadal and um, uh, decadal forecast and uh, uh, and decadal kind of time scale the lower layers will also be important so therefore uh, the, the 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 observations uh, on the upper layer are now improving in the ocean like with argos we're giving a, a great profiles all over the world, which are fantastic, and they're improving the upper layer uh, description, at least in the, in the larger scale. Uh, and that has made a tremendous difference uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, capturing the uh, the 
uh, the, the short term variability in the ocean, like uh, the interannual n so time scales uh, and interannual time scales. And so, so I think that is now if you go to time scales of uh, like decadal prediction, I think the lower uh, ocean will also have an important uh, contribution. Therefore, we will need better initialization, even the uh, uh, in the lower ocean that we already know, for example, uh, the uh, the Atlantic uh, uh, AMOC, Atlantic um, Meridional Overturning Circulation, plays an important role in initialization of the decadal uh, decadal uh, decadal prediction, and that requires uh, uh, observation even below the uh, below the uh, uh, below the one or two kilometers that we are talking about, but covered by Argo. So. Mm, so therefore, these are the issues. So depending on what is the scale of uh, prediction that you are talking about, uh, uh, maybe you will need uh, the, the ocean uh, models. Of course, definitely uh, for long term simulation, uh, definitely the deep oceans are very, very important. For short term prediction, short term climate predictions like decadal prediction, five to 10 years ahead, you will also the lower uh, the deep ocean will have an important contribution. Is that uh, okay? Okay, uh, Mani, we can conclude. I think. Um, thank you very much. Then I'll uh, I'll. I'll then stop presentation, uh, stop presentation and okay. Um, okay, thank you very much. Then I'll leave. Thank hello, you. hello, Bupin. Thank ah, you ah, very much. Ah, ah, I, I see that money is not here. He money, might have lost his connection. He must have, might have, he had a problem with his headphone. So yeah. I think, yeah, there was yes. it. Then, uh, then uh, just tell money. I'll on. tell him. Yes, okay. on on, on okay. IIT Madras, Mani's behalf. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. And and everybody who participated. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. We look Bye. forward to further interactions. Okay. Bye. Bye. I'm sorry, there was a power cut at my home. In IIT, I think. Oh, everywhere in IIT. Okay. I, I suspect I just saw him logged on and seems to be logged off. Okay. So I will just directly call him. I think, uh, yeah, so I think we can wind up uh, this uh, discussion. Um, and uh, I think I, I will uh, call uh, Professor Goswami now. It's, uh, <laughs> and and thank, thank him on, all, on behalf of all of us. Yeah, surely. Thanks everyone for attending this webinar. If uh, there are further questions, I'm sure uh, you can either directly contact Professor Goswami or uh, let me know. Thanks a lot again. Thanks, Mani.